everybody. Uh, no Nations League yesterday, are no games whatsoever. But I said let's make one final um, video on the Nations League and you know the results and what it means for going forward for um, uh, qualifying for the Euro 2020. Um, also, if you didn't realize, um, it was yesterday, in four years, that the next World Cup will start. World Cup in November, in December, Christmas World Cup. I'm at the point where I actually, again, I'm more looking forward than shaking my head over it. Um, I still hope Qatar, Qatar doesn't host it. I still hope that. Um, but I think now uh, it's unavoidable. I'm afraid um, the Arab world, yes, would deserve to host the World Cup. But hosting it in this tiny country that are building tank stadiums all over the place, which will then be shipped off. Not only getting it was already bad, but I think the way it, uh, you know, the way it happened, but even the thought of it. I know at the time I thought, oh, this might be the first World Cup where you can actually really watch three games in stadium in one day. It's, I think it's possible. With a little bit shifting around, maybe, maybe missing here and there, but I, the more I think about it, less excited I get about the hosts but hey they beat Switzerland and which just leads us to the next uh, big thing I'm not coherent today leads us to the Nations League um, Switzerland yes they lost with a second string team to Qatar but if we wouldn't have any playoffs Switzerland would have won the Nations League they finished the best first place team. Uh, you know, everything else gets ranked. Um, if you rank the first place teams in League A, it is Switzerland, ahead of Portugal, the Netherlands and England. And I don't know if they will use any seeding at this procedure. It wouldn't make much sense, honestly, uh, with four teams. But that would be a way to seed those. Uh, or, you know, you could even say, let's have Switzerland play England or Portugal the Netherlands. Save yourself a draw, but I understand a draw. More viewers, more television money. I guess that's where it's going. Okay, so um, what I wanna get first go through the playoffs. We know that the final four is Switzerland, Portugal, Netherlands, and England. That that much we know. And we know that, now another caveat, that they don't qualify due to the regular way. We have, those four already have uh, spots guaranteed. And I was wondering now, let's really assume the worst case scenario. Uh, Switzerland, Portugal, Netherlands, England, all not qualifying the traditional way. What I'm wondering is, will they make a new playoff? Because that wouldn't make much sense to me. Uh, well, we have the final four played next year. And then we know we have the League A, B, C, D playoffs, but if exactly those four don't qualify, which very small probability, they would play that again, maybe with different draw. Uh, that to me seems a little bit ludicrous, but okay. Um, it's probably not gonna happen. But we know Switzerland, Portugal, Netherlands, England, one of those four will be present at Euro 2020. That's what they have guaranteed. We also know that one of Bosnia, Ukraine, Denmark and Sweden will be present. And um, I just want to give a shout out to Bosnia Herzegovina. I think among the groups of three, Bosnia has the highest points total uh, with 10, which is quite a feat, I would say. Uh, getting 10 points out of six games, that's a near perfect record. So Bosnia, Ukraine, Denmark and Sweden, one of those four will be present at Euro 2020. Same goes for Scotland, Norway, Serbia and Finland. And again, it's all one of those will be there 
uh, and the caveat is they will not, uh, they would play the playoff. Um, however, if one of them qualifies on the traditional route, then uh, we'll, the spots will get filled. We'll talk about that uh, in a second. And the first, uh, fourth playoffs is for League D, of course. We have Georgia, Firem, Macedonia, Northern Macedonia. <laughs> I still have a trouble how to call it. Uh, I honestly, for convenience sake, I would like to call it Macedonia, but I know this is not uh, quite correct. Uh, and I said that I sounded in an earlier video. Uh, the official name is called for former Yugoslav Republic of Macedonia, so Firem. That seems. Bravo! Uh, so Firem, and then. Um, have an agreement on Northern Macedonia, but I think that everyone tries to nuke that one. Uh, politics. Uh, the funny thing is that uh, so so often I want to just talk about soccer, but with with things like that, you you drift off into politics uh, in almost no time. But yeah, so we have uh, Georgia, Firom, Kosovo, another one where I said yesterday. That's some political tension, but at least not over the name. And Belarus uh, will play for another ticket. So one of those four, and highly likely that exactly those four will get the ticket. Yeah. So you gotta be uh, aware of that. I know that many scoff a little bit at that one of those four uh, will be there. I honestly think it's a great deal, uh, a great thing that they have. Give give the lower leagues at least some exposure. Uh, AFC, the Asian Football Federation, has been doing that. They have this Challenger Cup and then nations like India that otherwise would not have had a chance can qualify for the Asian Cup. And I mentioned already the Asian Cup played now in uh, January, of course. It's now with 24 teams. Uh, to me, that's ridiculous in a way. But okay. Uh, it doesn't get my excitement up, but the Africa Cup of Nations also is with 24. There I can understand a little bit more because uh, they have almost as many member associations as UEFA. Still, I think Asia is more ready to host a 24 uh, team tournament because of the, uh, and, and, and the logistics. That's more something that I don't think that Africa is quite uh, adept in doing. Okay, so we have those four uh, winning the leagues um, and we also know uh, just we have now the, uh, and those are also the most promotions in the final four. That means that uh, in the next, let's go through that, in the next installment of the Nations League, we have the following nations in League A. This is Switzerland, Portugal, Netherlands, England, Belgium, France, Spain and Italy. And then Bosnia, Ukraine, Denmark and Sweden. Um, if we have in League B, we have Croatia, Poland, Germany and Iceland. We have Russia, Austria, Wales and the Czech Republic. And we have Slovakia, uh, Slovakia Turkey, Ireland. Oh, no, no, no. And we have Scotland, no, uh, Norway, Serbia and Finland. We shouldn't drive and read at the same time, but okay. Uh, that's how it happens. So again, we have um, in League uh, B, Croatia, Poland, Germany, Iceland, Russia, Austria, uh, Wales and the Czech Republic. And from League C, the promoted teams are Scotland, Norway, Serbia and Finland. So, uh, I feel this is a less even um, set than it was before, uh, especially the relegated teams. Germany, among, uh, chief amongst them, but you know, also Croatia, gives is actually quite some quite some difficulty in that uh, league and I think that the current teams that stay put they will have a hard time gaining promotion honestly I, when, when, when I look into Austria possibly being in there um, it's not a nice prospect league C we have Slovakia, Turkey, Ireland and Northern Ireland those are the relegated teams from league B 
Bulgaria, we have Israel, um, we have Hungary and we have Romania, of course, India. And then, uh, just give me a sec, we have Greece, Albania, Montenegro and Cyprus. And then the promoter teams, which uh, we already talked about them. We have Georgia, uh, Fyrom, we have Kosovo and we have Belarus. So those are the promoted uh, teams in League C. And then the relegated teams are of course uh, Cyprus, Estonia, Slovenia and Lithuania. And League C, then uh, all the other teams that are not promoted remain in League C. We have Luxembourg, we have Armenia, we have Azerbaijan and Kazakhstan. We have Moldova, Gibraltar, the Faroe Islands, Latvia, Liechtenstein, Andorra, Malta and San Marino. So, so far for the next Nations League. Now let's go to Euro qualifying and uh, that's why I got a little, a little bit confused. Now for Euro qualifying, uh, let's go the traditional route. We'll have again 10 groups of 5 or 6 teams, which is what we had before. Um, and this time, unlike for uh, Euro 2016, only the top 2 qualify. So, and since there is no host nation, you can make a quick calculation. We have 20 qualifiers, 2 times 10, 20 qualifiers. Um, the seeding of the pot is now, of course, also determined by this Nations League ranking, but not this weird that I just read to you. But we just take all the League A teams ranked, then all the League B teams ranked. And by ranking, I mean we are taking first place, rank those, second place, rank those, third place, rank those. Fourth place, uh, if there's a one rank those in League C. However, to rank the third place teams, uh, since we have one group of three and three groups of four, uh, to rank the third place teams, the uh, games against the fourth place team are di are discarded so that they're on the even level. This was also used to determine um, relegation because one third place team was about to get relegated and that was Cyprus. And so in pot one we have 10 League A teams, only two got into the uh, second pot and those were Germany and Iceland. Iceland, uh, not a real surprise because Iceland didn't win a game. Germany is a huge surprise but you know they were in a tough group and yeah Portugal and Poland decided to uh, let the game end in a draw. So Poland is in pot one. And we have Germany in pot two, uh, clearly the pot two team that every single one wants to avoid. Um, maybe there is some justice, I'm afraid there won't be, that Germany uh, will get in a uh, pot, let's say, with Poland. That Poland then, I, I think this would be a little bit fairer, but yeah, even if we have then, let's say, England and Germany in a pot. Uh, would actually be good for quality qualification because you get uh, two interesting matchups, provided that you don't get a, a difficult team for pot three, which is still possible. Okay, so pot one, pot two is then Germany, Iceland, Bosnia, Ukraine, uh, Denmark, and Sweden, Russia, Austria, Wales, and Czech Republic. So the cutoff was um, at the second to second and third place teams in League B. Uh, that was a relatively clean cutoff, I have to say. Uh, it worked out well for the organizers. And therefore we have in pot three, Slovakia, Turkey, Ireland, Northern Ireland, Scotland, Norway, Serbia, and Finland. And then the two best placed, second place teams of uh, League C, which is Bulgaria and Israel. And when I said uh, Greece, threw away maybe a better spot. That's exactly what happened. Uh, if Greece would have won their final game, uh, they ha would have had a big chance to get in the better pot. Uh, depending on the goal difference. But, uh, that's something that was maybe not wanted because now we have the fourth pot. Hungary, which a draw against Estonia it was a great draw, but you know, uh, uh, I think in that group, Hungary and Greece should have been the two teams that uh, were 
destroy potential the two teams that had the biggest chance. I think Finland got a big boost by having the first in the first four games three home games. I don't want to discount the Finnish achievement, but that gives you a definite advantage if you play that many home games and then you just uh, at the end. They could cruise because they got their job done at home. I mean gotta be said they got the job done. And for that, congratulations, Finland. I don't want to discard it, but I still think it was slightly, slightly unfair. But you know, cold weather. So, fourth pot: Hungary, Romania, Greece, Albania, Montenegro, Cyprus, Estonia, Slovenia, Lithuania, and Georgia from League D. So the top team from League D makes it into pot four. And then we have uh, in pot five. Uh, Macedonia, Kosovo, Belarus, Luxembourg, Armenia, Azerbaijan, Kazakhstan, Moldova, and Gibraltar. Thanks to the two wins, and this is... Uh, I'm not sure if they would have made it in the traditional way, uh, but I'm very happy to see Gibraltar uh, move up a, a pot and the Faroe Islands. I honestly think the Faroe Islands are, a, are such a pesky opponent. Yeah, of course, as an Austrian, I'm, I, I will say that was in Landskrona in 1990. If you have not heard about it, look it up. Uh, one of the two most humiliating defeats in Austria in And then the last pot, uh, there we have uh, Latvia here is the team that uh, I'm absolutely surprised that they are in that pot. So we have Latvia, Liechtenstein, Andorra, Malta and San Marino. Um, now those of course are not uh, 10 teams because we have Four teams are guaranteed to be in a group of five, and that's the uh, four final four participants. And then there will be another group that has only uh, five teams instead of six. Uh, so this is how the draw is set up. I want to see the groups, of course, uh, but you know it's going to be interesting. Uh, Euro qualifying, or you know, in Europe it is never straightforward because you have the big teams, but as uh, Europe is so even that uh, many things can happen. Uh, even though Austria now is for the second draw in a row in pot two, it's not guaranteed that Austria will uh, get the second spot. I mean, last time they finished fourth. Rather disappointingly, it was a very even group. I, I remember when, when the draw came that everyone was happy. Yeah, we have Wales in from pot one. This is uh, this group is easy for us. No, it turned out not to be easy because you also had Ireland and Serbia from the other two pots, which made it a rather uh, evenly matched pot. So. Uh, Always have that in mind that uh, it also depends what you get from the bottom pots and I have to say that uh, from pot 2, I mean Austria is not in there but you know pot 2 you don't want to have Germany, in pot 3 I'm sure you don't want to have Serbia. Uh, there are other nasty teams in there but Serbia is clearly the one that stands out from there. Uh, pot 3, Hungary, Romania, Greece seem to be opponents you want to avoid. So, Pot 5, yeah, the way they were playing all the top teams in League D, and I'm not sure about Latvia Pot 6, but you know, Pot, pot 6, it really depends then. Okay, so we have 20 qualifiers, and now comes the really, really complicated part. And I'm glad I'm not on the interstate any, any, anymore, so that we can uh, discuss a little bit more. Now, you will take uh, the four top teams from every league and make a playoff. You cross out the ones uh, that have not made it. Yeah? Uh, that have made it and then you fill up. But now it is very crucial to note the following. We have um, League A. Uh, you fill up only from League A. If everyone from League A has qualified, you leave those spots empty for now. Understand? Same thing for League B. 
you see, let's say, uh, from League B, we have Bosnia, Ukraine, Denmark, Sweden. Let's say Denmark and Sweden qualify. Bosnia and Ukraine, for some reason, didn't. And I'm not, I'm not saying that those, it's just a, as an example. So Denmark and Sweden go off the list, so you would fill up now. The next in list would be Russia and Austria. If those have not qualified yet, they would move in, 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 into the playoff. If they have qualified, then you go down there is Wales, Czech Re Republic. Let's say that uh, Czechs didn't qualify there, so the, uh, but Wales and the Russian Austria did. So you would have Bosnia, Ukraine and Czech Republic and we leave the fourth spot blank for now. Yeah. Do the same thing in League C. You just go down this uh, ranking, do the same thing in League C and the same thing in League D. Now that you have done that, uh, of the remaining teams, if there's still slots open, probably in League A will, will, will be slots open. So note that for League B, slots have been allocated, but there is still a few slots that are open. Yeah. Uh, but now you take from the ones that have not been assigned yet, through the process within the leagues, you take now the best four teams and put them in the League A qualifier. And note, this might include League C teams. The idea is that, let's say, if Iceland did not qualify from... Um, no, Iceland is, is not uh, bad. Let's say Poland, as they're the last ranked team. Although I think Poland will also qualify. Uh, but let's say Poland is the only one left. You want to give the League A teams an, an advantage and therefore uh, you would fill it up. If need be, with League C teams. You do the same thing with the League B playoff. Uh, since there are no League B teams left, let's go down the list. Some League C teams might be in the A playoff. You give now a few League C teams in the B playoff. And the D playoff, I'm pretty certain, will remain as is. Complicated? Yes, but now that we have a ranking, uh, I don't think it is as complicated anymore. If I also think there is some fairness to it with the way they fill up. However, it makes it way more complicated. The easiest would be that the first, the best first place teams go into the playoff, blah, 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 and so on. Uh, or can we find another uh, mode quickly? If there's no league, if all League A teams have qualified. I don't know. I think the way they do it, 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 it does make sense when you think about it. It's just the procedure is super, super complicated. Super, super complicated. Um, to the point where actually, yeah, I'm seriously considering, you know, for Euro 2016, I made the effort to make qualifying pro probabilities, uh, make a model for qualifying probabilities for um, uh, the tournament, uh, in, uh, even matching playoffs and so on, and I am, honestly, I am uh, very, very tempted at doing that, that again. Uh, if it's not, not only for you, but also for myself, I'm super interested in who, how it would play out at this very moment. Uh, but of course for that we need a draw first. So I don't know, I have to see. Uh, it's all very time dependent. I think the draw is already two weeks, so I'm yeah, I'm not very how to say I, I, I am motivated but I'm I I don't see it happening. Because I actually have uh, at work I probably have quite some pressure soon. Uh, and at home, I don't have the time and I actually want to keep doing videos uh, for about jerseys and so on as well. So uh, we'll see. We'll see how it, how it, how it goes. Um, it would surely be interesting to have all that. I actually can do it probably retroactively anyway. Uh, we have a new FIFA ranking, which I already made a video that I somewhat are excited about, but. Um, I think it, it's too early to really play well, so we'll see. If you've made it that far in this video, and it's a long video, I gotta give first of all congratulations. 
and second I want to say there will be a little treat this evening I have my top 10 video already um, and you'll be able to watch it's the top 10 national team jerseys that I really would like to have um, I hope you will enjoy that one and I will try do my best to have um, the two jersey review the videos that I already shot already few days and maybe I'll shoot tonight the, the remaining two or th should be three because I know now a few more um, jerseys now I think we've seen all the jerseys and I'm gonna look forward to bringing those to you okay this was a long video um, I tried my best to explain ev everything and I will not put any graphics in there this would help a lot I might do it on my blog but let's see how that will go again let me know what you think about all that uh, about the qualifying process what I like is that they use at least the sporting competition to determine the ranking somewhat so that's pro probably the best thing that can be said but let, let me know what you think about all this um, give me a thumbs up like this video if you uh, enjoyed it and please subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like these or you know if you want to stay updated with my personal soccer universe up until then i think the next tournament national national tournament national team tournament that we'll talk about is the asian cup i probably will give you a regular update and up until then we'll talk to you soon bye